Okay. All right. So I want to talk to y'all about a couple of important things. Oh, God, y'all, I hurt my back. Oh, I'm so old. It sucks. Don't get old. All right. Anyway, um, I want to talk to y'all about a couple of things in chapter three. Okay. So if you go to chapter three, I want to say the first thing is that I want to talk about at least is where um, Nick, who is at Gatsby's like really big lavish party, and I'm not gonna lie, I think I would love to go to a Gatsby party, maybe a few, okay? Not every night, I'm not saying that, but you know, once in my life, I think that would be a whole lot of fun. But um, we have this odd moment. Nick is a little, you know, it's awkward because he's one of the few people that was actually invited. People just tend to, you know, show up. And Gatsby not only allows this, but encourages this. And there is a reason, okay? So that's gonna come a little bit later. But these parties are magnets for like the wealthy and the famous and the wannabe wealthy and famous, right? I mean, it's pretty tremendous. So Nick shows up, you know, with this invitation and he doesn't know anybody. And bless his heart, he's already been through that really awkward smaller party at that apartment in New York, right? But at this one, he says, you know, I didn't know anybody. So I felt like my best way to handle it was to hit the bar and start drinking, right? There's a lot of drinking in this book, okay? But he does run into his friend Jordan and he kind of latches onto her because, you know, you do that when you only know one person at a party. And she's like, you are way too nervous. We need to like find Gatsby. He actually invited you. You'll feel better after you meet the host. And so they kind of go on this little search for Gatsby, right? Okay, so this leads them into a library, okay? So in the library, they find this guy who they're gonna call Owl Eyes because he looks like an owl to them. He's got these enormous glasses. And he said that he's been on like a two or three day bender and he thought that the library would sober him up a little bit. So he's kind of hanging out in the library, okay? And if you are on, um, you're probably gonna find this about page 49 and look for look for a stout middle-aged man with enormous owl-eyed spectacles now i don't know what page it is if you're in the skinnier book but as soon as y'all find it 45. okay good 45 in the skinny book the rest of y'all i think have um pages that are pretty similar to mine so who's found it everybody yes yes okay you want to highlight this stuff guys all right so Jordan and Gatsby stumble into the library and this is what we find out. A stout middle-aged man with enormous owl-eyed spectacles was sitting somewhat drunk on the edge of a great table, staring with unsteady concentration at the shelves of books. As we entered, he wheeled excitedly around and examined Jordan from head to foot. What do you think? He demanded impetuously. About what? He waved his hand toward the bookshelves about that. Now you wanna highlight some of this, okay? As a matter of fact, you needn't bother to ascertain. Ascertain means to find out, to look into it, right? You needn't bother to ascertain. I ascertain they're real. The books? He nodded. Absolutely real. Highlight this, y'all. They have pages and everything. I thought they'd be a nice, durable cardboard. Matter of fact, they're absolutely real. Pages are here, let me show you. Taking our skepticism for granted, he rushed to the bookcases and returned with volume one of the Stoddard Lectures. See, he cried triumphantly, triumphantly, it's a bona fide piece of printed matter. Fooled me, this fella's a regular Belasco. It's a triumph. What thoroughness, what realism. Highlight all this, y'all. Knew when to stop, too. Didn't cut the pages, but what do you want? What do you expect? Okay, now, this takes a lot of backstory. So, we know that Gatsby lives on West Egg, 
okay? And think about the American map, right? So West Egg is the new or the old money? It's up here, Henry. West Egg is new or old money? Think about the West Coast, new or old money? Which one was settled first, East Coast or West Coast? East, so West would be new money, right? Just like in America, okay? So West Egg is old money. There you go. And, um, you know, we hear that Gatsby's villa or estate, look, you know, it's kind of new, right? What do you do if you have built a new estate, but you don't have the generations and generations of family like items or books that have been passed down? And you need to outfit a library because all these estates would have libraries, y'all, okay? Well, evidently, a lot of people took shortcuts because this guy that we call allies has noticed that all the books that are lining the shelves are actually real books. They're not cardboard inserts, okay? So, in other words, if you were trying to look like you had old money, but you didn't have the old family money and the stuff to go with it, maybe you'd take a shortcut and instead of actually outfitting your library with real books, you would like have these thick cardboard inserts that looked like many spines put together and you would like put those on your shelves, right? And it would give the appearance of age and wealth and intellect and all that other stuff, okay? Gatsby has real books, but here's the thing. He says, knew where to stop, too. Did not cut the pages. Okay. So, some books, oh, man. All right. Some books, back in the old days especially, would have been published in such a way that you would have, like, long sheets that would then be folded and put into the, the uh, binding, okay? And to actually read each page, you would have to get like a letter opener or scissors or something and you would have to like cut the pages so that they would open. So that's why you often see books at Barnes and Noble that have these kind of ragged edges, like this copy of Their Eyes Are Watching God. Can y'all kind of see that? That's made to look like those old books that you would have had to literally cut in order to read the books. So the books on the shelves are real, but what? If the pages haven't been cut. Never been read. This is important, y'all, because we don't know what's up with Gatsby. I mean, he's wealthy, but we don't, and he says, we're gonna find out, that he tells us that this wealth is old money but his estate's pretty new. He's got books that are real, but they haven't been cut. What this does is it, it lends this question of his authenticity. Is he everything he says he is? There's an authenticity to him, but it goes to a certain point, and then it's like, what's really up with this dude? You couple that with all the rumors that people spread about him because he's super private and personal, yet he throws these lavish parties. People are just really curious about him and they just don't, they just don't know. Now, I have a little anecdote. So my husband's little sister married a guy, um, they got married really young. He ended up being a doctor, and he's one of the doctors in this little town in South Louisiana called Eunice. I don't know if anybody knows where that is. Okay, it's outside of Lafayette. She has like six kids, big Catholic family, and they're building a 10,000 square foot home. That's a lot. That's a lot of space. And they're evidently putting in a two-story library, okay? And her brother texted us and said, Jane and Emily are putting in a two-story library and I've never seen one of them read a book. Isn't that funny? That's pretty funny right there. Anyway, maybe you have to know them. Okay, so, uh, okay, that leads to the next little section. 
All right. So right now we're like, who is this Gatsby? What is the, you know, what is he all about, right? And everybody's got all these different kind of, you know, theories about him and how he made his money. And finally, skip about two pages ahead. In my book, y'all, this is, hmm, it's on page 51. Um, so I guess that would be what, 40, seven for y'all maybe something like that look for the paragraph i was with jordan baker i was still with jordan baker tell me when you find it 47 for y'all okay so here we go nick i was still with jordan baker and they had not found gatsby yet right we were sitting at a table with a man of about my age and a rowdy little girl who not little but you know young woman who gave way upon the slightest provocation to uncontrollable laughter I was enjoying myself now. I'd taken two finger bowls of champagne and the scene had changed before my eyes into something significant, elemental, and profound, okay? At a lull in the entertainment, the man looked at me and smiled. Your face is familiar, he said politely. Were you in the third division during the war? What war? World War I, good. Why, well, yes, I was in the 9th Machine Gun Battalion. I was in the 7th Infantry until June 1918, I knew I'd seen you from somewhere before. We talked for a moment about some wet, gray little villages in France. Evidently, he'd lived in this vicinity, for he told me that he just bought a hydroplane, and he was get, or he lived in this vicinity. He had just bought a hydroplane and was going to try it out in the morning. What do you think a hydroplane is? That would, well, it's a plane that what? There you go. There you go. And he says, want to go with me, old sport? Just near the shore along the sound. What time? Any time that suits you best. It was on the tip of my tongue to ask his name. When Jordan looked around and smiled, having a gay time now, she inquired. Maybe this is a good time to say that back then, gay just meant happy. Okay. Much better. I turned again to my new acquaintance. This is an unusual party for me. I haven't even seen the host. I live over there. And I waved my hand at the invisible hedge in the distance. And this man, Gatsby, sent over his chauffeur with an invitation. For a moment, he looked at, at me as if he failed to understand. I'm Gatsby, he said suddenly. What? Oh, I beg your pardon. I thought you knew, old sport. I'm afraid I'm not a very good host. And he, you want to highlight all this, y'all, okay? He smiled understandingly much more than understandingly. It was one of those rare smiles with a quality of eternal reassurance in it that you come across four or five times in life. It faced or seemed to face the whole external world for an instant and then concentrated on you with an irresistible prejudice in your favor. It understood you just as far as you wanted to be understood, believed in you, as you would like to believe in yourself and assured you that it had precisely the impression of you that at your best you hoped to convey. So Gatsby, being, you know, he's a romantic, we know that, but what does he have the ability to do? Make a good impression. Well, now Gatsby, he's, Nick is talking about how Gatsby's seeing into to Nick. Look back through it again. What does that mean? He has this rare smile. He sees the good in people. He sees the good in, who said that? He sees the good in people. Good, Emery. And he really has this ability to like focus on you and make you feel good about yourself too. And that's a genuine gift, right? Um, guys, that's a genuine gift, okay? Now, but precisely at that point, it vanished. And I was looking at an elegant young roughneck, a year or two over 30, whose elaborate formality of speech just missed being absurd. Might want to highlight this. Sometime before he introduced himself, I got the strong impression that he was picking his words with care. So kind of like the books, you know, he has this genuine quality about him. And he has this ability to like see the good and see you for what you want to see in yourself, which is awesome. 
right? At the same time, he says, I had gotten the impression that he was really formally speaking and he picked his words with care, which can indicate a couple of, couple of things. If you're really choosing your words with care, it could just mean that you're thoughtful, you know? It could mean that you um, feel out of your element. It could mean that you are even mean you're hiding something. So we just don't know about this Gatsby. We know that Nick likes him, right? But at the same time, there's a little question as to who is this guy, right? Who is this guy? Okay, and remember, as Nick finds out more about him and pieces all the, you know, information together, so do we, right? Okay, time taker quiz. I gave you 22 minutes because... Um, I 